Good evening, everyone, and welcome. This is Twist Gaming, where you get to play board games with us. Coming to you live here from our studio here in sunny South Florida, uh, bringing you our first impression session of our Spotlight, where we show off games just coming out into the industry. And today we had the pleasure of showing off Churrascaria. Uh, oh, what's the tagline? Gl uh, a cutthroat, cutthroat game, game of, of gluttony. gluttony. And that is definitely what it was. But first off, we need some introductions. As usual, I'm Matt. I'm Anne. I'm Josh. Hello, everyone. We're Twist Gaming. Hi. Uh, we would like to point out that this stream and all of this week's streams are brought to you by Churrascaria, uh, a cutthroat game of gluttony, as well as uh, Gruff Stuff of Nightmares. Uh, both of those games currently live on Kickstarter right now, so definitely go check them out, and I'll throw that link over in chat for y'all. So first up, what is... Tarascaria, besides a, a cutthroat game of gluttony. It is a place you go to when you're really hungry and the waiters bring food around on steaks. Thanks, Matt. I'm on there steaks? for you. I mean, yeah, technically it steaks. is a steak. It's it brings a steak you steak on, on steak. steak. Yeah. Yo, story. dog, I heard you like steaks. Okay, so state your steak. <laughs> in this case, Churrascaria the Game oh. is a game where we have all sat down at a Brazilian Rodizo restaurant, so one of these uh, Brazilian steakhouses, and we are... Who's picking up the tab? Uh, not me. We are all battling to see who can eat the most meat, and so the age-old uh, strategy here when you go to these restaurants is don't fill up on the side dishes. So you're going to get negative points for all the side dishes that you're eating. You're going to get positive points for all of the meat that you're eating. And uh, finally, we're going to be doing some take that elements with each other where we're going to be trying to steal food from other players' plates, flip their tokens over to prevent them from getting more food. And, uh, or to make them get more food. Or to make them get more food and force them to eat some uh, of your not-so-good side dishes. Uh, so in a nutshell, that's the game. But without any further ado, let's get into the meat potatoes, meat and potatoes of this section here. Huh? Well, uh, that joke uh, so half does time. As per usual, uh, we like to start out with the person that won the game. In this case, both myself and Anne won. But since Anne is the big winner of the evening, she's going to go ahead and start us out today and talk about her favorite aspects of the game. So, Anne, take it away. So, I think that one of my life's passions is learning. I oh, absolutely I thought you were say love steak. I thought over <laughs> eating. That's my second life's passion. <laughs> Um, I'm Italian. I like to eat it's so good, especially steak. I don't steak. think it's because you're Italian. <gasps> Why is it then? So you like food because like you're it. you. <laughs> Back on track here. <laughs> so I absolutely love learning, and that really uh, crosses over into which games I enjoy or the elements about games that I enjoy. And I think that my favorite part of this game, even before we got into playing it, was the research that David and Will did in order to bring some authenticity. Thank you, Will, for helping me remember my word uh, to this game. I love the fact that um, on all of the cards... I'm not going to steal You love the it. fact that Dave and Will went to the steakhouse, the steakhouse Texas State Brazil and just stuffed their faces yes, for but research. I don't blame them. On the cards, the I absolutely love that uh, the text, I'll let you keep your joke. The flavor text. It's flavored flavor <laughs> text. Uh, it talks about all of the various kinds of meats and what they are. And up in the uh, upper left-hand corner is the Portuguese pronunciation or the Portuguese spelling uh, for the food. And in the... Yeah, I would like to point out here that in the rule book, not only is there the Portuguese name for the card there's also a pronunciation guide to make sure that you're not completely butchering the word huh? yes. butcher meat huh? uh, but also the american uh, translation of what it is so what we would commonly refer to it as here stateside yeah so uh, that is probably my absolute favorite part of the game I'm, I'm going to step on your toes here a little sure. bit, and I need to jump in here. And I said it in the beginning of the other stream of the Spotlight session, mm -hmm. but this is basically Matt goes to a Brazilian steakhouse. This is 100% how I operate at a Brazilian steakhouse. As I started to really delve into the rules before the stream, I'm just like, oh my goodness, I love the flavor of this game. No pun intended there. Uh, but in all seriousness, though, I... I really just had a big smile on my face when I was going through and reading the game, the instructions for the game, because I've yelled at people for, why are you eating the salad? You're here to eat the meat. And it's... You're not paying X dollars a plate. Exactly. So. Exactly. So, big shout out. I, I really do love the flavor of the game. Josh? No, yeah, I, enjoy the play. I enjoy the style of the game. Um, I think the meat art is awesome because I kind of want to eat the cards. <laughs> Yeah, the food, the food on the cards looks absolutely delicious. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull some of these cards out. So we've got the uh, the Costella here. So this is our braised beef ribs. We've got the sausage on the skewer. Uh, that filet. Oh, I was muted. Sorry, guys. 
That uh, filet just looks so yummy. So just repeating myself, uh, the art on the cards for the meat makes me hungry. Yeah. So this game should include a note that says meat sweats not included. <sighs> there you go. Um, to, yes, I'm muted for Lucy Flex. <laughs> that's, that's exactly Nobody it. puts baby in a corner. Uh, but no, I like the style of the game. I liked how the game played. Uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit. And I like the the flipping other people's tokens over. Yeah. Um, I think I'm the person that did that the most probably. You did. 100%. Yeah. Um, was, uh, I really enjoyed the mechanisms also of you can only have four card on cor- four different or four foods on your plate. And then if you have to fill out more, you're scrambling to make room as the waiter's giving you more food. So you're shoveling in the, the easiest thing to shovel into your mouth, uh, which in these cases are the negative to positive uh, cards as well. So that added a nice little uh, aspect of the game that I yeah. enjoyed. Uh, anything else really pop out to you, Anne, or Josh? I know Anne likes her quick reference guide. I do. I like the quick reference guide. I don't feel like I needed it this time, and that's not a negative. It's nice to always have one just in case. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that towards the beginning of the game with the turn actions, I went back and I looked at it to make sure that I was doing the right thing. Um, I don't think that there are so many actions that it gets confusing, which I think is why I wasn't referring back to... Um, the, the, the quick references. Yeah, yeah. So uh, someone in chat is asking, is there any issues for colorblind? Um, I didn't have any. There's I, really not much color. There's, there's the color nothing the, that really relies on color in the they game. They do green and red on the top. Or is it green and red for the positive negatives? Yeah, but it's there's but a plus and a minus in front of the two of them so also. Really so that is supposed to be green, mind you. And then that's red at the top there. I think the other place where the green and red are prominent are on the... The token here, so this isn't going to show up at all. <laughs> I'm going to switch over to the board cam for a second here. Uh, so this is the card, the green side of the card, and then this is the red side of the card. So s- a few things that let you differentiate between the two besides the fact that you can't see it, but this has text on it that says, Sim por favor, and then the back side says, no. Now obrigado. So no thank you, and yes, more please, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the, I back to the flavor discussion, it's really cute, the fact that the green side, you have the salt shakers all nice, your drinks there all full, and you got your fork and naf- knife and napkin, and then on the no side... You just attacked the everything's, table. Your table's a mess, your drink's empty, there's schmutz all over your napkin, you're good to go. So I, there's a lot of little things in the game that you really notice once you start digging in a little bit more that really just make, you, make the experience more in-depth, oh, yeah. and I enjoy that. I think it's a lot of attention to detail. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's jump into the uh, constructive criticism section. Yeah. So, Josh, you want to take us out here? This is we're gonna we're talking about anything that we think could have been handled maybe a little bit better in our eyes. And as a reminder, this is our first impressions of the game. It's our first playthroughs. So and there this might is be also a prototype. So some of the things we mentioned might be changed. Correct. Um, a minor thing on the meat cards. Matt mm-hmm. and I were talking about this earlier. Was um, the flavor text and the actually use like this so it has the effect text. Yeah. The font's slightly hard to read. Like the font's a little on the thin side yeah. and maybe bolding the font and so it's so something like just a minor font change. Like yeah, it's not bad, but like mm-hmm. that could be easily fixed. Uh, the, uh, just minor thing. And the other thing, and Matt disagreed with me when we talked about this beforehand. Um, the action cards. Yeah. I. I so I really like the art style of the meat cards, and I feel like the action cards don't have that same kind of realistic style, and I kind of like the realistic style. So the, the meat cards go more along the lines of hyper-realistic in terms of their design, whereas the action-reaction cards are more comic booky. if yeah. you will. It's, it's, the, the art's good. It's just I, I would have liked to see... A, it's rough when games sometimes mismatch the art styles. I can appreciate that commentary. So. And personally, I, I don't think... I think it would have been a mistake to go with the hyper-realistic people cards. And I just enjoy the fact that the food is so realistic looking because it makes me hungry yeah. and in the good way. So I don't mind the fact that they're different, um, but I could definitely see how that's... That yeah. would be a point of contention for someone. But it, it wasn't a big deal. I mean, otherwise, the game I, I had a lot of fun with the game, so like... I didn't really have any issues. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a few turns that I didn't really have anything to do. Yeah. Which was weird. And I wish there was like... A free action of 
drawing like an action card or something. I think Maybe. that I think that that was probably my biggest complaint was that I I I know it would I know that it would probably mean more development work because you'd have to play test things to make sure that they were still balanced and as will mentioned that he they originally had a regurgitation card in the game but it was op mm -hmm. so they had to take it out but i feel like i want more variety in the action cards and i really felt that way in two two ways two senses mm -hmm. uh one i had the same kind of situation as you where it's like Mm, I don't really know what I want to do here because there's nothing that I really think is going to be useful. And like you use the one turn to, just to flip the card around. On the other hand, and I am not a fan of take that style game. So I will mention that mm -hmm. beforehand. Um, I felt like, and I had, I feel, I felt like I had food trust issues at the end. Like there were so many times <laughs> where I just couldn't do anything. And I know that that's kind of inherent to take that style games, but I would have liked it if, if there had been more action choices and you still had the card limit of four, maybe you guys wouldn't have had as many cancellation cards. Um, so like, uh, at one point, people were like, oh, you could have discarded draw my cards, which I figured out later in the game. Yeah. But there was one turn where I had all reaction cards in my hand. I used three or four of them. The last one was still really good, and I wanted the reaction just to right. keep myself safe. So I couldn't get any new cards. I had no food on my plate. Mm -hmm. So My maybe thing was already green. You guys were already on red. So there was almost nothing for you to there do. There was almost nothing for me to do. So, yeah, I, I see where a a default action of drawing one card from the action deck to put into your hand might be beneficial just because you could use that as one action and then maybe use that card as a second action. Yeah. So it's, um, it's just... Um, it was rare. It happened, like, once where I was really kind of completely blocked. Yeah. Where I couldn't... Like, I couldn't even do one action. Yeah. Um, so, so it's not a big thing. But that was, like... It happened one time, right? It happened one time in yeah. the two games we played. So... I'm going to say I agree with Anne. I think there's a little bit too much of a take that element. And I, I do enjoy take that games, but I think I that specifically hate playing take that with yeah, you. <laughs> yeah, I, I am a jerk in take that games. I will 100% admit that. There was a little bit of nope, nope, your nope, nope, your nope to my nope. I don't mind it. It's just I think maybe a few less of those cards would have gone a long way. Um, and yeah, then I feel like the ratio of like note cards to action cards was a little high. A little high. I, yeah. I would have liked more action cards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I like to take act of I'm gonna do something, not the so much. Nope, you're not gonna do that. Right. I agree. Um, because if you do take something, then I can just turn around and be like, no, we're just gonna do the opposite. Of I'm gonna take did. take it back. Yeah, or something like that. Which effectively is the same thing, but but it, it plays out differently. Yeah. So one other thing is a little bit of a consistency thing here. So all of the meats have this like slate gray background. All of the sides have a like a green background and all the desserts have a bluish background. Yeah. And I get that's to differentiate the desserts and the sides, but there's nothing else in the game that differentiates them. Oh, that's a good point. They behave mechanically the same exact way. And there's no cards that specifically only affect desserts or only affect the sides that I saw, that I remember. Um, so maybe putting those on the same background, just to clear that up, because I, you know, at first glance you might think that they do something different, different. Yeah. or have cards that affect them individually. Yeah, that's a good uh, idea. I didn't would think. be the only continuity issue that I saw within the game. Uh, but otherwise, I, I like the way that everything played out. Yeah. Um, all right, so... Any other criticisms? Uh, I just I want to make it. I felt like we normally are pretty short on this part. Yeah, we're a little bit longer, and I think the only reason we're a little bit longer is we all enjoyed the game. Right. And there's just a couple little minor tweaks that would just make it better. Yeah, I think that yeah, we. I, I think don't think any of those. I'm sorry for jumping on, on you there, but I I don't think any of those are crippling to no. the, the the play of the game. No. You know, I really think that this is a, I think this is a really, and I guess this goes into like our final thoughts. Yeah. Uh, but I do think that this is really a fun, quick, easy to learn game. And I think it's a light game. So it's definitely something that you could bring out with people who aren't gamers. Um, but I think that we all felt very strongly and maybe that's why that section was longer yeah. about the lack of actions or the high nope to positive uh, reaction cards uh, on like, it. I see this being like 
all right, we're having game night. Not everyone's here yet. We can play this because it plays in like 20 yeah. minutes. But I think that if I played the game again, I would intentionally remove some of those note cards. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so someone's bringing up exploding kittens, and that's far more noping than yeah. this. So that it's not as Yeah, that's ridiculous. pretty much all you're doing in exploding kittens is just noping. That's yeah. like the it's, whole game. It makes, it makes games very frustrating. Right. Uh, so... Overall, though, I think that our uh, positive out, uh, positives that we were talking about with the game uh, yeah. outweighed the negatives, at yeah. least in my opinion. They definitely did. Um, but now it's going to bring us into the most important question of the evening, and that's would you play this game again? Let's start on the far end there. Mr. Josh. Yes, and I'd be very interested to see this in the higher player counts, where there would s it's I'm not going to nope. You can't do it to me. You have to do it to someone else and not be like... It only I, affects one other person. Yeah, and it kind of... I'm not negative, but like, I, I, the higher player count, I can see this be a lot more fun, and where that noping might not be as... Prevalent. Yes. I got you. Yeah, because you're not preventing someone from doing something more as presenting them with a different option. Yep. Okay. And I then the other that. thing, like, the food coma card... I, that, that was the other thing, food coma cards? Yeah. I would think you might hold on to them a little bit more when they're really big things come out and be like, no, I'm not going to let you eat that one. So you don't Instead spam of, them as much yeah. as we did, or as I did. <laughs> <laughs> I already had dinner, but this background's making Yes, it is. Uh, so, Anne, how about you? Yeah, definitely. Um, like Josh said, I think it's the perfect game, like a light game. Um, you know, before you have your gamer group, come over, or if you're playing with a lot of people that aren't gamers um, and you're just looking for something light, quick, and fun, Maybe bef while you're waiting for dinner to cook. This would be a great maybe, game on Thanksgiving. Maybe you bring this to the Brazilian restaurant and you wait for them to come I, out. I was actually I thinking have about other priorities. this to the Brazilian steakhouse with this, you know, playing this at a Brazilian steakhouse. That's where we can do our dinner meeting. There we go. Uh, and then finally for me, I'm going to say that I would definitely play this game again. I enjoy Take That Game. It's a little heavy on that side for me, but I really did enjoy the game. Thematically, it hits all of the marks for stuff that I like to see in games. I love the theme. I... 10 out of 10 for me in terms of that. And, and uh, David saying it has been played at uh, Brazilian Steakhouse. <laughs> they were very confused. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's definitely uh, two thumbs up for me. So you heard it across the board here. Yes, yes, yes. We would definitely play this again here at Twist Gaming. Uh, but that was our first impression session of our spotlight for Trascaria. Uh, so thank you all for joining us this evening. Uh, we really do appreciate it. And if you haven't had a chance, definitely go back and rewatch the spotlight. It's going to be on video on demand right after we're done streaming. And you can watch all of the hijinks that ensued, the meaty hijinks. <laughs> and uh, the puns. And the puns. And finally, we would like to say that this stream and all of this week's streams are brought to you by Tarascaria as well as Gruff Stuff of Nightmares, both of them live on Kickstarter right now, so go check it out. But signing off for now, I'm Matt. I'm Ann. I'm Josh. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.